everyone. I'm Trish from Pinky's Farm and today it's Friday Sews. Um, I haven't done a Friday Sews video in a really long time um, primarily because I just haven't been motivated to sew. I mean it's been so hot here. My sewing room is upstairs in our old kind of farmhouse and it's really warm up here and I don't know just been lazy. Um, it doesn't mean I haven't been productive. I have done a lot of productive things whilst not sewing. Um, I redid the whole guest room, repainted the walls. I've been maintaining all the farm landscaping and stuff, staying busy with that. We had a bunch of chickens hatched that I kind of had to be tended to for about five or six weeks until they were big enough to, you know, be sold off or to just make it in the world on their own. Um, what else? Just and in between, not really just being motivated to sew at all. So the last thing that I did sew was a success. So I have one success and one failure to show you. Those these have all been made like probably in the last six weeks. So um I just want to tell you about one of them and I'll grab it to show you. This is a little dress that um, was made with, you may recall when I bought the fabric for this shirt that I made back in, I was just wanting stuff for beachwear for the summer and I had bought this seersucker with the little flamingos on it. And so I made this little dress. It's got the front pockets. It's kind of pieced in the front here. Um, super great summer dress, just plain on the back. And it turned out really good. It has a bunch of flaws on it actually, but I love it and I've been wearing it. So I want to talk to you about, she's back. I want to talk to you about the pattern because the pattern is this old Lisette. Let's see who made it. It was Simplicity 0450. And this package, I had my little granddaughter when she was like five helping me package up things and tape them. And we spent a long time in here doing patterns and. So this is her taping job, which I think is so cute, but it's kind of falling apart. But anyway, this pattern is from, I think it's from 1979, approximately. And that's probably when I purchased the pattern. Um, I have made this, it's called the Portfolio Dress, and I made this dress a bunch of times already for me and a friend of mine. Actually, I would make them for me, and then my friend, North Carolina, kept wanting them. So I would just give them to her and make myself another one. So this, I think this is the fourth one I've made. And it's a really good pattern. But in 1979, I was like two sizes smaller. Um, and so the pattern had been cut to a size 12. And that was me cutting it a little bit large in case I grew any. Well, yeah, I've grown any. Um, I've grown to between a 14 and a 16 and unfortunately this pattern is cut to a 12. So when I cut it out, I gave myself a little extra room, you know, I just kind of graded it out a little bit from the 12 to make it about somewhere around a 14 and it does fit and it fits really good, but it's almost too tight through the bust. Um, I can get away with it because there's a little bit of give in the fabric and, and it looks fine, but the next one I would like to actually fit me perfect. So. I thought, well, maybe I'll go online and see if I can find this pattern that's uncut or cut to a larger size and save myself the drawing out and the grading and everything. So, y'all, I first went to eBay. I looked this pattern up on eBay and the only one they had was $85. 85, zero, zero. Like, I thought, that's a mistake. That's an anomaly. Someone put the decimal in the wrong place, maybe. Or, you know, it was supposed to be 850 and they accidentally got the decimal wrong. So I thought, well, okay, that's not gonna work. So I will go to Etsy and check there. So I went to Etsy and I did find two versions of the pattern. Um, one was $65 and the other was $55. So I thought, well, my, I'm sitting on the gold mine here. I can't believe it is out of print. And I know it was really popular, the portfolio dress, but I just, I really am in shock that somebody wants $85 for some pieces of paper to make this dress. So 
Needless to say, I will be grading mine out and tracing it out and trying to make it work. But that was my sewing success and I'm encouraged to make some more of those because I love that style with the built-in pockets and you could color block it. There's enough pieces that you can do a lot of different stuff with it, change up the neckline. So it's a good standard pattern that I've always loved and trusted and I still love it today. Now, the one that was not a success is this very easy Vogue right here. I love the style. This is Vogue 9122. This is from 2015. And there's just only a few pattern pieces to it. And this is just so cute, isn't it? Well, the one I made didn't turn out cute. Now, it was partially because, again, the pattern was already cut to a size 12, and I'm not a size 12. I need at least a 14. So, you know, I gave myself some room, but I think the main thing was my fabric choice. Um, so I'll show you the fabric that I used. So it looks cute. These are fabrics that I got from Joann's, and um, they're very slippery, just, you know, they're man-made fabrics, I don't know, they're, and they were on sale quite a while back, and I bought some, and I just thought, you know, yeah, make me that little dress out of that. It's got the blues in it. Well, I don't know. The neck, first of all, the neck was super gapy. I mean, it stood out crazy fashion, so I had to do some adjustments to the neckline, and it came up really high. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's just not my size or something. Um, and then it had these darts that go kind of down the side, like you see a lot of French darts made that way. And this fabric was very unforgiving and it's super slippery. So I got those in and everything was just puckered up. And then the whole thing is just too tight across the bust where I had had to adjust it here to get the gaping out. It was too tight in the bust and it was really see-through. So I thought, you know, I'm just gonna grab some scrap fabric, some cotton sheeting, basically, is what I had, and I'm gonna line it. Well, you know, you shouldn't try to line a dress after you've got the whole thing made, because, you know, it's difficult. So I basically had to take the whole thing apart to line it and get it back together, and it just, it really just did not appreciate all of that, so. You know, if I were to lose some weight, perhaps I could still wear this, but as you can see, it's just too tight. So I don't think I'm going to even finish it. All that's really left is to put a little closure in the back and hem it. I think for now, I'm just gonna chuck it to the side and maybe hem it and donate it. Or I don't know, just cut a little bed pillow out of that part, I don't know. I might just repurpose this into something. Maybe I could get a skirt out of this bottom section. But, um, yeah. <coughs> I think that's what really knocked me out of the sewing mood. Because once I did that, I was so frustrated with that slippery fabric. I was really regretting any of my slippery fabric choices that I've made in a long time. Um, and speaking of fabric, behind me you'll see the Great Wall of Fabric. And um, this was a Goodwill purchase. It's actually a shoe rack that I, it's on wheels, which I love. Come back over here. And I can hang fabric on both sides of it. So you can see both the front and the back have got fabric on it. It holds a ton of fabric. And it is a great way to utilize some kind of horizontal fabric space or horizontal space for fabric storage because I have storage problems in here. I can't even get the stupid thing to turn around. It's so funny because in the rest of my world, in my home, I'm very minimalist. I don't like tchotchkes sitting around. I don't like a lot of stuff lining the walls and crammed together and, uh, you know, clutter. But when you walk into my sewing room, it's the complete opposite. Every space is jammed with stuff fabric literally up the walls and um there's so much more where this came from it's ridiculous 
but I like being able to just look at my fabric and pull patterns out and go, oh yeah, I could make this, make that. So I'm trying to get motivated by petting the fabric, watching the other Friday sews. And um, Michelle from Michelle Sews Again has a challenge going in August that is so your birthday, hashtag so your birthday. And um, I think I might participate in that because basically I have the perfect piece of fabric for it. It's a piece of fabric I thrifted a long time ago, and it's definitely from the 60s. Um, I'm a 1960s birthday, um, birth year, so I think it would be fun if I have enough of that fabric. May only be able to get like a pair of shorts or something out of it, but you know, it's hot here, so definitely could you always use another pair of shorts. So um, other than that, you know, it's just been kind of busy, but I've been wearing the daylights out of this shirt that I made for beach walking. And we actually beach walked this morning. My girlfriend and I went and had breakfast and did a couple miles on the beach and I probably won't be able to walk tomorrow, but I'm super proud of myself for just getting up and doing something. Um, Cause just my motivation's been out the window. Um, a family member is, my husband's mother is in assisted living and we basically got the contents of her house delivered to us in a pod a couple weeks ago. So we've been going through boxes and boxes and boxes of her stuff. And she owned an antique store and she grew up um, pretty privileged. So um, she has a lot of stuff and a lot of it is 17th century stuff. And one thing that uh, we, we really can't even keep it. Like I said, I'm more of a minimalist when it comes to having stuff. I don't like big, dark, bulky stuff. And, um, but one thing we are keeping is a 17th century sewing cabinet. And it's just a little cabinet that was from like a silk and braid maker. And um, it's really pretty. And I'm just gonna try to find somewhere to incorporate it in the sewing room. Just, you know, we just, there's only so much room we can take a bunch of stuff. I mean, she's, she's just got tons of antiques and it's really sad. It's really made me sad to think you know, this is a whole picture of her entire life from birth has showed up on our doorstep and we now have to figure out what to do with it. And, you know, it's just, he does have siblings and we've encouraged them to come and get some of it, take what they can with, they've come over and helped us a little bit, but we're pretty much stuck with the bulk of it. So I don't know what's gonna happen to it. There's a great place here that donate, they have a big sale once a month and they donate to a charity which takes um, women and children out of human trafficking. And so we've donated a bunch of it to them for their cause and I would like to send them a whole lot more. But you know, we have this Victorian bed and it's gigantic. I mean, it would reach up to my ceilings and it's huge and the posts are this big around and we, we can't use that. My top floor would probably crash in if I brought it upstairs. So anyway. Just dealing with that that's life um i went to an estate sale this is before we got all the stuff from Mimo. went to an estate sale that a friend of mine was having and her mother had passed away and she was a sewer and she said you know you need to come over here and check out all this fabric and stuff um and sewing stuff so i went and they were just basically giving it away and so i had actually bought a couple of small pieces of furniture and a couple of pieces of fabric and I said, you know, I'm gonna go home and get my truck, come back and pick up this chest that I bought and these pieces of fabric. So I'll be back in a little while. So I came back with my truck and they were literally loading the back of my truck with anything they could throw in there. Boxes and boxes of fabric, sewing stuff, cap, you know, chests with like plastic chests with sewing notions in them, you know, pots, pans, plates, trunks, anything she could fit in there. Every time we turned our heads, they were stuffing more things in the back of our truck. So we brought it all home and um, I went through all the fabric and it was honestly 99% double knit, itchy, scratchy, barely stretchy, you know, probably from 1960s, but um, that fabric was just old and stinky and scratchy and I have just had to dump most of it. Um, I saved a few pieces that I did put in my Etsy shop, but there were a couple of cute pieces that I saved out. So I'm gonna show you those. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them, but they were pretty. One of them was this, this really pretty stripe and it's stretchy and 
I like that. I think that's, I think I can do something with that. So that's a cute little stripe. There's a lot of it here. There's probably four yards of it. So um, I'll come up with something to make with that. And then there were these two, which I thought went really well together. This is kind of like a twill, or it's almost denim-y in a way, but it's this teal and denim stripe. And it's darker on the other side, so could play around with those colors if I wanted to. But then there was this check that went really well with it. So, um, and it's kind of like a twill also, a little bit more lightweight than the other, but I'm thinking something color blocky or I don't know, I have no clue, but it's basically free. So I took it. Then there was this really pretty floral Got a lot of this too. This was Rose and Hubble manufactured by David Textile. So not familiar with them, but this is pretty, isn't it? I like that. I could see a little summer shift out of that or something. I mean, I could always do like a little tablecloth and napkins or if I didn't feel like doing an outfit. And then the other two that I kept out, three, um, this is really pretty. This has got that cable knit look to it. I had been looking for cable knit fabric for the longest time and I did end up buying some around this time, excuse me, around this time last year. But this is stretchy cable knit. It's a coral color, which is not my best color, but there's a lot of it and for free. And I think it'll be easy to work with. So yeah, I'll make something out of that. And then this is along the same colorway and it's basically a tube. It's a tube of knit sailboats. Now, I won't be wearing anything in a tube. Tube top, tube nothing. But it's cute and it would pair cute with that. And I actually have a vintage tube of navy anchors. So I'm thinking maybe I'll pair it up with the navy anchors and make something on a theme. If I ever feel like sewing again. And then this was just a really thin, stretchy, kind of a pretty, really thin, but it's, you know, it would be nice little pajamas or something. See how thin it is. Hello in there. But I like the pattern on it and it's got this larger scale floral on the bottom, kind of in the same colors. So I guess that she liked those colors. So I got those that I could do something with. Those were redeemable from literally about four giant boxes of fabric. That's the only really redeemable stuff in it. So what am I gonna make next? It's an excellent question. Probably gonna do the sew challenge. And I have a shirt that I made a while back that's no pattern. I literally just cut it, it's got a grown on sleeve, kind of shaped like this one, but just with a rounded neck Super simple, no pattern necessary, and I have a tank dress the same way that I've just cut out. And I feel like after battling with this, I just don't wanna use a pattern. I just wanna come in here, lay some fabric out, throw down a dress that I like, follow that shape, cut it out and sew it, and just do it more as a creative um, process than, you know, than as a structured sewing process, so. Glasses are such pretty purpley glare from QVC. Um, so, but anyway, that's that's kind of what I have on my plate. I really have just, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. I need some inspiration from y'all. Now, I did take down all my previous videos, and I'm, I'm going to start saving them again. But um, I don't know what came over me. I just wanted to start fresh. I was like, oh, these are so depressing. I'm sweating so much. Um I just felt like they were kind of, some of them were depressing and they were through some difficult times in my life and I was just, I didn't want to look at them anymore. So I th I'm going to start uh, redoing them, but um, I appreciate people who've stuck with me and checked in with me because quite a few of you have checked in to say, are you still there? Are you alive? Where'd you go? I can't find your videos. And um, I'm still kicking. So um, I'm going to try to keep going with sewing and I'll check in with you on next Friday. Cheers. Have a great set day. Have a great summer. Don't sweat to death. Don't burn up in fire. 
like the West Coast seems to be burning down. Um, you know, just take care of yourself. Focus on yourself. All right. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.